MCN. Welcome once again. So it's our pleasure to host this and um, um, I hope everyone can see me and hear me. Um, we have our chat box by the side. Um, we'll be taking your questions um, at some point, you know, during this session. So as I said, um, welcome once again. My name is Kate um, and I'll be your anchor for this session. Before we get on with the business of the day, um, allow me to introduce the speakers for this session. So from MTN, we have Joseph Oweye. He's the manager, corporate segment, MTN Enterprise Business Division. He'll be taking us through the presentations on MTN's data for education. Hello, Joseph. Joseph, can you just unmute yourself and say hello? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you, Kate. Okay. All right. So um, uh, from Google, we have Ebuka, Ebuka Uferi. He's the Associate Product Man Marketing Manager from Google. And he, he will be taking us through Google's education initiatives all across Africa. Hello, Ebuka. Hi, everyone. Nice to be here. Okay. So we also have um, some partners from the Google side on this call. Um, from MKB Consulting, we have... Joseph Iho, we have Olabode Daudu, and we have Otevia Andrew. Hello, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Nigeria. Good afternoon. Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. So let's get down to the business of the day, shall we? Okay, so at the start of this year, I'm so sure no one saw the events that have taken place, um, you know, no one saw them coming. You will agree with me that the effects of this pandemic was felt all over the world, even as it affected every sphere of life, from individuals to families, to communities, to businesses, to governments, ETC. Um, the education landscape was not left out of this. Um, we had parents who overnight had to become assistant teachers. We had teachers who had to adapt to the new way of teaching. We even had students who had, who had to also adapt to new ways of learning. The world just had to adapt to having, living and being a new normal. So while, we, um, while we're not out of the woods per se, uh, you know, and then people, businesses, governments, all are still taking precautions just so we ensure that we do not um, um, experience a second wave of the lockdown, the new normal beckons you know, onto everybody. And I must say that we must align. This is the reason why MTN and Google are bringing you this webinar. Um, the G Switch for Education webinar is um, a session where we um, hope to broaden your minds. We hope to give you insights as to, you know, um, the landscape or the face, the new face of education going forward. And um, um, to lead us, you know, into this session with the presentations, I will call on Ebuka. Ebuka Ufere is from Google. So like I initially said, he will be taking us through Google's um, um, initiatives, education initiatives across Africa. Ebuka, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kate, for that intro. Hi again, everyone. So I'm, my name is Ebuka Ferry. just once more. I'm the education marketing lead for Google in Africa. I also lead our Android initiatives. And I'm excited to, you know, to speak to you today on this webinar um, we're focused on GC for Education, a joint initiative um, you know, where brought to you by MTN and Google. So just to uh, quickly kick off, um, our mission at Google remains always to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Uh, this mission became 10 times more complicated, um, more complicated than ever before in a time where, you know, we had digital life accelerate and we saw the need for information grow, you know, more than we've ever seen it in the past. So many people needed to stay connected, schools, teachers, parents, everybody was affected. You know, this, it was a global situation. People were struggling to stay connected, to keep work going, to keep learning going, to, you know, just even, even stay connected to their loved ones. And you know, definitely, like being 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 the company that we are, and with this mission in mind, we always look for you know ways to solve these challenges and to make you know things more um, simpler for everybody. So this year, 
one of our biggest commitments was economic recovery. Through this, we aim to support um, you know, teachers, students, and also business owners with getting back on their feet following the impact of the pandemic. Earlier on this year as well, we launched our Google for Education tools in the region, in Africa. It's the first time that you know, we had actually actively pushed and launched the products in Africa with the focus on helping people to reimagine learning and give teachers, students, the tools to stay connected from wherever they might be, to keep learning up, learning going from wherever they might find themselves, and just to ensure that they navigate and are able to like ensure a sense of continuity, even despite the impact of the pandemic. And so in September, as I said, we announced a commitment to help 500,000 students and 25,000 teachers to get back on their feet following the impact of the pandemic. Since then, you know, we've made extensive progress with our partner network, and we have some of those partner, one of those partners on the call today with us, MKB, um, to uh, provide people with training, support to use our GC for Education tools to reimagine learning in their schools and in their homes and wherever they might be. We've also worked with partners like MTN, and you know we are also coming together again today. We've partnered together on training initiatives, on affordable on affordable data bundles for schools, and you know, and, and today we're excited to come to you with an even more holistic uh, proposition. Beyond all of these things, you know, uh, we've also launched this year a teacher training program. This program is publicly available online. It's I'm, I'm going to ping the link in the chat. This program actually just focuses on giving schools the best practices to uh, learn how to reimagine learning in a virtual scenario and deliver the best experience for their student body and, and even supports parents who might be struggling with learning from home. And now it's, you know, it's one thing to, to say all of these things and give uh, all, all of these introductions, but please allow me to share with you also the story of a Kenyan school that you know, adopted our, our tools in the time of the pandemic and just really ran with it and were able to keep learning going and, and, and sustain their teachers and students. The school is 23 years old. We have a population of 1,900 kids. So everything's been going great until COVID-19 happened. The schools were closed in March. I got worried as a teacher. We were so sad because it was just an abrupt decision. All the work that they have been working on would possibly have to stall. We were very worried. I have bills, I have a family, and we depend on this job. Fear of the unknown, fear of the future. How are we going to meet our obligations? How are we going to survive? We felt hopeless and desperate. We saw a situation where our learners will slip away. When we were exposed to that Google Classroom, it felt this is what we needed. Hello. We soon realized that we needed more control over our offering. So we signed up for G Suit for Education. That she's there, that she's explaining the concepts just like in school. Parents appreciated and they decided to chip in financially. We have been able to keep going. We have been able to sustain our staff members. We have been able to get pupils that are not originally from our school to join our classrooms. This helps even the community around us to continue learning despite the restrictions and schools shutting down. I can confidently say as a teacher, our students are ready for the final exams. Whatever transformation COVID has forced us to go through is welcome because the transformation is here to stay. The space of education has changed. We cannot ignore the strides that we have made during this period. In Swahili, there is this expression that says, We have been able to grasp the opportunity and grow digitally in a way that we never got to do before. And Google for Education has been the silver lining and it has helped us remain relevant in very uncertain times. Uh, 
Uh, sorry, I'm going to stop. I don't know if I'm still sharing. But yes, yeah, so that's just a very you know powerful example of a school that adopted um, this 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 technology that defines the new normal and just really ran with it and just drove positive impact. Not only did they empower their students. Um, they were able to establish a community learning program that helped them pay their teacher salaries. As we saw, they were able to empower their wider community, bring people even outside of their classroom together. And this kind of, I think, just showcases the power of, you know, virtual learning and applying technology to your school. You're able to have impacts that you typically would not be able to have. And I think what we're kind of seeing this year, there's a lot of research. We're also working on a lot of research that shows and speaks to the fact that a lot of schools are kind of, have been forced to grow digitally due to the impact of the pandemic, they've woken up and seen the need to adopt a hybrid learning model, which is like, even though like we are moving toward, you know, going back to physical learning, a lot of schools are seeing the need to have a blended system where they are able to actually train virtually, teach virtually, or teach physically in the classroom. And, you know, these tools definitely are, 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 are super great to have. So I'm going to pause here and um, I'm going to invite one of our, uh, I'm going to invite a, a, a few people from our Google for Education partner, MKB Consulting in Nigeria, to, to speak to you about, you know, G Suite for Education and how you can actually effectively apply it to your classroom. They'll share tips and tricks and, you know, just give a lot of insight into our tools. So uh, I will pause here and hand over to uh, Joseph. All right. Um, thanks for that, Ebuka. Um, it's okay if you can mute your mic now. Okay, so um, I hope we all were able to view the video. Uh, apologies for where it was um, a bit shaky, you know. But then the message, the message rather, was um, um, passed across. Okay, and I think everyone can relate when I say with this new normal. You know, it um, threw everyone into the somewhat unknown, you know. However, I, I find that as human beings, by nature, we adapt. So um, I'm going to be calling on Joseph Oweye. So he will be taking us through um, the MTN data solutions for G Suite for Education. Joseph, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, um, Kate. Okay. Sorry, just to share my screen. Okay. So please, can, can you confirm that my you can see my screen? I can. It's it's yeah. It's up. I okay. see your slides. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon once again. Um. Um, and thank you to Ibuka. We have laid a very solid foundation um, as regards um, at the, the new normal. Uh, we've been talking about is that, yes, there are so much disruption in our environment as regards education. And now we are beginning to align that the reality is what we are now. And that is what we call the new normal. And like Ibuka rightly said, um, as much as we have Google uh, presenting the tools, the productivity tool to be able to help us in driving education and virtual learning. We also believe that that vehicle called that platform, for that vehicle to work, the engine it needs to work is data. And that is what MCN is representing. We know that over the years, in line with our vision to lead the delivery of a, a bold new digital world to our customer, and also our vision to make our customers' life a lot, a whole lot brighter. MCN have been shown innovative solutions, and um, our customers across all the various segments, corporates, um, SME, and the public sector can testify to this innovative solution. So looking at that, we also embody ourselves to see that we want to also impact education, virtual education has come to stay. And then we also know that and the struggle around the pandemic, moving into the reality of it and knowing that the schools are closing now, we know that many of the schools will be going into this new norm, um, full scale, or we have having blended learning by next section. And that's why we feel that it's very important that the school is winding down this section that we need to present there. So from MTN side, what we are presenting to you is the MTN data for education. So principally, so principally, we are just um, um, putting forward to you 
our education package to be able to help you in assessing the Google platform. So as much as we have that platform, Hello, Joseph. Hello, Joe. All right. Um, hello, Joe, can you hear us? Okay, so we're gonna move on. Okay. Okay, I just heard him now. Hello, Joe. All right, so um, apologies, everyone, uh, once again. Um, till we get to hear from Joe, um, we'll have to move on. So I'm gonna call on another Joseph, <laughs> Joseph Iho, to share his slides as he takes us through um, an introduction to GFE tools. So that's Google for Education Tools. Joseph, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Please confirm if you can see my screen. Yes, you can see your screen. Okay, thank you very much. So G Suite for Education, Google for Education is what we've been using in my school for the past two years plus. Okay, some of the tools we've used in the Google environment include the classroom, Google Docs, Slide Sheet, Jamboard, Calendar, as well as the Google Administrator Console. The drive environment we use in the cloud. And being a G Suite account, we have all limited storage space for both teachers as well as all our students in the school. The drive can be accessed through the web interface. Just type www.google.org, you get there as well as through the mobile device, any mobile device, such as Chromebook, tablet, smartphones, you can use them to access the drive. We we'll work offline, as well as online. When we work offline, once we are back online, all the documents are updated immediately. We we'll share files and, folder, files and folders with both teachers and students, and student to students, and we we'll work together collaboratively on the same folders and documents at the same time, from different places. Even some of us had to travel to different parts of the world. We still work together using Drive. Then the dog slide and sheet. Hello. We also use them for Hello, Joseph. Can you hear me? Hello, yes, Joseph. Can we can't you. see your screen. Yeah, we can't see your screen. We actually can't see your screen, but we hear you. We can't see your screen. Okay, can you see my screen now, please? Just confirm. No, not yet. Oh my God. I'm on now. Not yet. Okay, so Andrew, Joseph. Yeah. Um, you want to refresh that. I'm thinking Andrew probably should take this since we can see him. Okay. okay. Hello? Thank you. Hello, Andrew. Andrew, Andrew please okay. go on. All right, thank you. All right, can you see my screen, Nigeria? It's coming up. It says it's coming up. Yes. Yes, Andrew, please proceed. Okay. All right, as we have a, a quickly, a quick, uh, taking over from Joseph, a quick of mine. My name is Andrew Xavier. I'm an English teacher in Bloom Green High School, Port Harcourt. So, pleasant afternoon to you, Nigeria. I want to thank Google, uh, MTN for partnering with uh, Google to bring, uh, to help us with our classroom and education to the next level. 
terms of technology. So an overview of this presentation so far, we're going to be looking at uh, Google Classroom, Google Docs, Slides, Sheet. We're going to look at Jamboard, Google Drive, Forms, Google Calendar, and Keep, Gmail Chat, and Meet, Google Administrator. So all of it you are going to go through. These are many and more tools that are available uh, on the, the Joe Street for uh, Google Partners. Now, the drive, as I as as talked earlier, uh, is a cloud storage, some kind of storage uh, device, where you store all your documents, videos, audio files, whatever you have, you have to store them in your um, drive, it stores all kind of storage, okay, as long as everything is done on the Google uh, Okay, like he rightly explained, it is only metered for G Suite, uh, um, clients, if you're a just client, if you have all limited storage. But on a personal level, if you have a Gmail account, you have access to a drive as well, but then you're going to have a limited storage. Okay. Now, to have this drive, you're going to, you're going to need a, a, a Gmail account, a Chrome account. Okay. And now, he has explained you can access drive via mobile, a laptop or any device that can connect with internet, smartphones, Chromebooks, more than. Now this storage, online storage can work online and offline. It has settings, you go to the settings and set it so you can access it offline if you don't have internet connection. Now, if you set it up for online usage, whenever you don't have internet connection, you can still access your files, your documents, Whatever thing you have in the drive, you can still access that. Okay, but when you get connection back to internet, your files will be updated for you. <clears throat> now, on this drive, you can share folders, you can share docs, you can collaborate with your colleagues. So all of this is possible on the drive. Now, docs, we have docs, sites, sheets, all of this for collaboration as well. Now for creative writing, if you're an English teacher in this uh, webinar, you, you, you really need to pay very good attention to this tool, creative writing. With voice typing, your students who don't like to write with their pen are going to start to write wonderful stories for you. I'm very sure we're gonna give you a demo on this one. Now on Google Docs, you're still gonna have access to the dictionary. Now, you can see this package, it's a full package. Now, once you open your Google Doc through Chrome, a Chrome browser, you're going to see, uh, you're going to have a dictionary where you have access to check the meaning of words, uh, check antonyms, spelling, and all that. Okay, you can read aloud. You can select a part of the text and then read it aloud. Now, for those students who are lazy to do a revision, with this tool, they can just highlight a part of the text you want to read aloud, and the system will read it aloud to them. All they need to do is sit back and listen to what they have done, and then they can continue to make corrections to make the writing a lot better. So these and a lot more you can have on docs. Collaboration, you can collaborate on docs, slides, and sheets. Okay, if you're, if you're used to the Microsoft uh, you're used to uh, PowerPoint, uh, you're used to um, 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 you're used to Excel. And now these are all the Google format of Excel, uh, Word, Microsoft Word, uh, uh, PowerPoint, and Slides. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> these are all the, the, um, the, the, the um, Google versions of uh, Microsoft uh, tool. So if you're used to them, you'll know what you're, you're going to have to it's not much different, but uh, you, you're going to see that. Uh, okay. Hello. Hello, can you still hear me? Yes, we can. However, it's a bit right. shaky, so it doesn't come out, it doesn't come out quite clear. Okay, should I continue then? Yes. And okay. the way you just sounded, the way you just sounded is good. So <laughs> if you can continue like that, that would be great. Maybe I should speak a lot more slowly, man. Yeah, maybe. All right. Well, something Go on. About 
yes. and slides and sheets, being the versions of uh, Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Now, you can collaborate with these tools. What that means is that instead of using paper to work in classroom, for example, you want your colleague with your colleague, what you need to do is just to share this stuff on the Google uh, uh, platform with your colleague. So you can, whatever the person does live, you can also see it live. So you can work together, collab using dog slides and so Now you can search the internet while you are on the dock, have a, a document open in a Google um, platform. Right there, go to the internet, do all of your search. You can insert images within the Google Docs. You can cite resources. You can cite sources in Docs. You can also do real-time feedback as well. And now, uh, research within uh, the, the Docs. Without the, the Docs, here's some little bit picture for you. If you look closely, you can see uh, my document here. Okay, you can see we have a tool here called Explore. Once you click on the explore, while your document is open, you have access to the internet without leaving the Google page. So you can search through all of your studies and you can cite the web page you want to cite to avoid plagiarism. And then you can have your work authentic without uh, stealing um, those work original. Now, commenting on doc, this is a picture to show you how, how it works. Now, your students can collaborate, work on a sheet together. If you're, for example, you're writing a story, you give a, a group of work to your students to work together. Uh, they can work on the same sheet. All they have to do is to share the sheet amongst them. Uh, everybody will work on the sheet at the same time. They can comment on the sheet. You can see a part of the sheet is highlighted. Now, whatever comment the person makes, okay, uh, does not show write the document, the comment shows at the side. You can see a picture here, little box here, screen where the comment appears. So as a teacher, when you come in, you can see how far your students are working, what each person has done, and the comment and contribution each uh, student has made. Now, group work is also part of what I've been explaining. All of this is possible in the Google Docs. Now we have Jamboard. Jamboard is also very good for collaboration. We have real-time classroom collaboration activities. You can annotate images, live images, give a demo, and then you can plan creative writing with sticky notes. All of these things are possible through Jamboard for collaboration. Now the classroom, the Google Classroom and integration. Now the Google Classroom is uh, a classroom online. We can create a classroom for uh, your classes. If, for example, you're teaching math, you're teaching English, you can have a classroom for all of your students separately for English, where you can access them, give them homework, give them assignments, do all kinds of teaching. In this classroom, you can communicate with your students. They can communicate with you. All of this taking place online. Uh, there's no physical barrier of distance. All you need is to have access to the internet. Your students can communicate with you while they are so using the classroom. You can use sleep learning method where you can, you know, before the, the topic you're teaching the next day, you can post the materials ahead for your students to read. If they go home, look at the material, it could be audio, it could be a video file. They look at it, study it, and come back to class ready for questions, to ask you questions. Now, Google Classroom also makes it possible to, um, to apply the different solution because we know that uh, not all students, students don't have the same learning needs and learning styles. Uh, as experienced teachers, professional teachers, we know that every student is different. Now, the classroom makes it possible for you to give a separate assignments to students individually. You can also give assignment to the class as a whole. Now, the classroom also makes it possible for you to give homework, assignment, even integrate games into the classroom where students can learn through games. Now, you can send objects of students' learning activities to the guardians. That is, uh, you have to invite the guardians, the parents, 
to the Google Classroom. Once the program or set up properly, uh, the system will automatically send regular updates to parents, maybe weekly or bi-weekly. Okay. Now, also, you can manage forms. It's a, a wonderful Google tool that you can use to um, start planner to start your, for example, a lesson, to introduce a lesson. Uh, we always have uh, questions we ask our students to warm them up at the beginning of the lesson. You can prepare a form, a Google form, prepare all the questions from maybe a previous lesson to start to do a good revision. Now, students can attempt this to begin a lesson, and it could also be an exit count for them after a lesson, prepare a quick form, and then they can answer questions on it. You can use form to give assignments to students as well. You can use form to fix survey. You know, you can send it to parents, students, fill in required information as you want, depending on what you want. Okay, you can use it also to give quizzes and tests. In my school, we use form for exams and test all the math online except the essay question, of course, which we have to mark manually. Take that. Now, online examinations are done with forms. In my school, is what we do. If you're only here for uh, admission, we do this for entrance exams. Students can do answer questions online, just like uh, we have a uh, camp doing now. Online exam is uh, a kind of uh, type of activity uh, assessment. Okay, you can also use form to provide feedbacks to students or to get feedback from your students to know how much they have learned, to what extent they understand the lesson. Okay, prepare your questions ahead. At the end of the class, as a revision, send it and set it access to the classroom and answer all. We've talked about differentiation earlier. You can use a um, form for differentiation. You can set different questions for different students using the form, and then you send it to them differently and testing each student based on their learning abilities and style. All right, uh, the classroom information, uh, all things are possible here is just the online version of our physical uh, environment. This will happen in the classroom. You can get materials, quizzes, integrate games, video materials, audio materials can be shared with students online. Now, uh, Google Classroom makes it possible to create a paperless uh, assignment. Now, most schools these days are going paperless. It's very expensive now to get papers. and also very uh, cumbersome to organize papers. But with uh, Google Classroom, everything you do is stored online for you. You don't need papers. You don't need to uh, copy or print out whatever you do stored online for you. You can access all your files and folders through the Google Drive. Okay, uh, uh, Google Forms, like I explained, you can use it to start your, um, to kickstart your lessons, okay? Uh, you can use it after lessons as a summary to check how much your students understand, okay? And you can also use it to interact, uh, use it for students to reach, for parents to get feedback from their children. You know, how much does my child actually know? So Google Form makes all of this uh, possible. Now, Gmail, Chat, and Meet, these are communication tools uh, made available to all J Suite users, okay? Uh, Meet is actually uh, a video conference tool. Uh, during the pandemic, the, shock, the lockdown in Nigeria, uh, my school used Meet to hold classes with our students online. We are disturbed by the pandemic, the lockdown, we came in touch with our students. We held our classes online and it was quite interesting. And thank you. Now you can also use the meet for town hall meet with parents, students, you can meet with them, uh, discuss with them, uh, discuss the strength of the children with them, whatever issues you want, you don't have to uh, be there physically with the parents. Now we know parents are busy nowadays. Uh, they do all they need is just to tell you when they're available and you schedule a meeting with them via uh, Meet. Remember, Meet is a video conference tool. Uh, you can also chat with parents, send them email using all of this. 
and all these messages are instant. You can connect with your platform as well. Uh, uh, Hangout or chat is very useful for group work. When you give your students a group work assignment to do, they can chat among themselves even when they are at home or going about doing the assignment. So a physical distance is no longer a barrier with this tool. You can discuss yeah. of assignments, have video conferences with anybody, anywhere. Now we also have calendar, task, and keep to organize your task. Uh, calendar is very wonderful. Anybody, I don't know these days, I don't know of any career that is uh, that keeps a person on their toes that teaching, especially in the uh, private sector. A teacher is always busy, always moving, always preparing for one meeting, the other meeting with students from one classroom to the other, having so much assignment and deadlines to meet. All of these can be very, very, very difficult to handle. Now, calendar makes it possible for you to organize and manage your time. So calendar can serve as a reminder. Calendar can help you set up, uh, um, prepare, organize your schedules for you. Okay, your meetings, the dates ahead, uh, both for work and even personal, okay? Task also does that for you. You can use tasks to organize, to remind yourself, oh, I have exam script to mark, I have deadlines to meet, I have this, I have that. Now, Keep is a very wonderful tool. Uh, we use Keep. Keep is used to, um, uh, maybe you're studying online, because with Keep, you can insert images to your Keep. You can take notes as you study using Keep and store vital information. And all of these, uh, you can sync with, as long as you're online, you can sync with all your Google account. And with any device, you can always access any of these. Okay, now this is a picture of a, of a, of a, of a, a person having a video conference uh, using Meet. This is exactly what you're going to see if you start using Meet. You can see the participant down there. You can see the person on the full screen addressing them. So uh, the, all of these are possible using Meet video conferencing. Now the Google Admin Console, uh, this is a, a special area for the administrator, Google administrator, okay. Uh, usually in my, uh, it is the ICT department that handles this. They control what happens within the Google uh, uh, suite once you are a client. Now what they do, they are mostly is to, uh, they can limit what can be downloaded they can restrict and download. They can help students get uh, useful tools that they can push to students' uh, um, uh, devices so that they can use them. So they actually the check, the big check to uh, students using uh, um, uh, the J Suite, all students in the J Suite for education. So students don't uh, misbehave, go to where they are not allowed to go. So basically the admin council serves as the checkpoint, the police, the, the monitors all that is going on uh, in every uh, enterprise or establishment registered on that the JSO. Okay, so we have all of these uh, contact support. Uh, the admin council provides contact support to all members of staff who use the, um, the G Suite uh, tools. They can support you wherever you're having difficulties. They can help you out just to consult them. So basically they are the administrator, okay. Uh, so uh, the, uh, uh, these are the tools that are available to clients on the G Suite for education. Once you patronize, you start using these, you're gonna have all of these tools available to you. Thank you very much, back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Andy. All right, um, just um, a quick one here. So um, everyone, we see your questions rolling in and we will attend to them, okay? Um, we'll do that towards the end of the session, so please hang on. Uh, don't worry, we're not ignoring you. We see those questions coming in. And again, I must mention that we will be deploying um, uh, some polls, okay? When you see them pop up on your screen, please answer them. They're not lengthy. They're about, I think, six or so questions. Um, that will go on while the pr presentation continues. Okay, so I'll move on to Joseph Owoye. Joe, Andy, you might need to stop sharing your screen now. 
And I saw one of the questions was asking if um, um, people can get the recording for this session. Yes, you will get the recording for this session. We'll be sending out um, emails um, in case and in case you missed it. However, um, we will advise that you hang around because some questions I see here are quite pertinent. So it would be good um, that you get the answers to those questions. All right, Andy, please stop, uh, stop sharing your screen so I can get um, Joseph away here to share his. Andy? Yeah. Andy. OK. All right, Joe, the floor is yours. Okay. Kate, please, can you confirm if you can see my slide? Yes, MTN Data okay. for Education package, yes. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sorry, apologies, um, that it was a um, little technical each earlier, earlier that I was off for just for a few uh, minutes. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, thank you very much, Ebuka, for laying the foundation at the Google Suits. Um, we know very well, like we have heard, that um, Google Suits is a very brilliant educational resource among so many that we have available. And we know that for us to be able to enjoy this, um, it's only available virtually online. And that's why MTN is coming in, to be able to address um, that little challenge that you have. We know that there's the issue and the key challenge is access to data connectivity. And we know that, um, yes, that maybe within our environment, high cost of data, um, also in terms of network challenges all around, is one of the things that are challenges for us to be able to assess um, some of these resources that are available, including the Google suit. And that's the reason why we are here as MTN to present this to you. What we have is the MTN data for education package, a package that we have designed specifically for the education sector. And to help in driving virtual learning, which we know that has come to be the new normal. It offers school large bundles. So what we do is we are offering the school that large bundles where the school can purchase as a subscription and can um, subscription, no subscription. Extension, share this among the teachers and students. The school will buy a large data bundle and will be able to now share this among the teachers and students so that the teachers and students will be able to enjoy the online content and even assess the G Suite for education. Um, with low at low cost. For the schools, in terms of this data for education, the schools can share using two options. The first option is that the school can share via a self-service portal that MTN is, is, is going to provide. So a school has an option to share these data bundles among the teachers and students, two, two options. First is that you can share via the MTN self-service portal. Secondly, this <laughs> Bundles can be shared via the MTN data coupons. I'm going to go into details in terms of these two um, um, options. So I'm going to share via the MTN safe service portal. Now, it's quite simple. What we have in this case is where we have a self-service portal. Do it yourself. Everything is going to do it yourself. We don't want to um, bring burden of the situation where you need to get in touch with MTN for MTN to help you do some things. No. In this case, we are giving the flexibility and the powers to the school. The school will have a, an administrator. And the administrator would have been assigned by the school. And that administrator will be the one that will be given the admin right on the MTN safe service portal, such that the administrator will now be able to allocate data on behalf of the school management as approved by the school to the, to the students or, and the teachers or even the management, the faculty members. So a school, for example, will buy a large bundle, say maybe one terabyte bundle 
And MTN is giving capability for school to be able to now give that um, larger bundle to allocate it in smaller uh, chunks to the teachers and the students. And um, like I've seen on your screen, these are the available data allocations. So you can give out 250 MB, 500 MB, you can give out one gig, you can give out two gig, you can give out three gig, up to 10 gig. And this gig that are giving out has a validity of 30 days. Let me make you understand that the large bundle that you are going to buy as a school, that the school is purchasing, has 90 day validity. So when the school buys that large bundle at, with 90 day validity, the smaller chunks that the school is now giving to the teachers or the students would have 30 day validity. So, and these are the allocations that can be given, can be given as small as 150 MB, as much as 10 um, um, the gig, and even more than that. And the good thing about it is such that that assigned school administrator is able to allocate that data multiple times so meaning that i can do, i can give four gig as many times as possible give 10 gigs as many times as possible so in line with school approved data requirement so this is the first um the first option for the school that the school can allocate that data to the teachers and the students now to go to the second option the second option is that you can share via the mtn data coupons we are familiar with our recharge cards when you buy a charge card, I say you have pin codes. It's the same thing. When you buy, when the school buys the large data bundle, after buying that data, data bundle, you get in touch with MTN and say, MTN, please, can you help this break this large data bundle into small chunks? When you have these small chunks, such that the small chunk is now made, is now provided to the school in form of data coupons. So the way you have your you have your pin codes. So for example, you have one terabyte, and if you have one terabyte of data as large bundle, you can tell MTN and say, please give me this one terabyte divided into maybe hundred units of one gig, or you can have a mix. Maybe give me fifty units of one gig, give me thirty units of um, uh, maybe uh, two gig, give me seven fifty. You can have a, a mix of whatever coupon, um, the value, the data bundle they are looking at. And that MCN will provide to you in form of a 10 digit pin, alpha numeric 10 digit pin. And that 10 digit pin, the school can now give that 10 digit pin to the teachers or the students. Where the, student, the teachers and the students can now go on my MTN app or to the USSD channel or even the web portal to be able to redeem. So if, for example, a student has been, or a teacher has been given 1.5 gig data coupon, the student or teacher can go on my MTN app and go to um, follow the direction and will be able to activate the data coupon. And these are the available, like you can see on your screen, the available data coupons. You have a data coupon that are valid for seven days, one week, and you also have monthly bundles valid for 30 days. All of these options, and coupons are available. And at the same time, that multiple of these data coupons can be given to the teachers and the students. So it's not compulsory to say, oh, because I've given um, this number two gig, I can't give this number another two gig again. No, you can give a number two gig, that number can activate that two gig. You can give that number even three gig for, the number, for that person to, for that number to activate three gig. In as much as it is with, that the monthly uh, validity is still intact. So for the monthly bundle is 30 days, and for the validity for the weekly bundle is seven days. Bear in mind that the larger bundle that the school is buying has 90 day validity. The larger bundle that the school is buying has 90 day validity. So this is just um, an overview of the pricing, and you bear with us that compared to what is available that you are seeing in the market, this is relatively cheap. And this is why we are bringing this forward. It's, it, it's something that we know that, yes, access to data, that data connectivity is an issue, a very key challenge um, in assessing or in terms of driving virtual learning. And that is why MTN is now positioning 
to say that yes, as your number one um, part, number one um, telecoms company in Nigeria, that we are making this available at a very uh -huh. school, such that the school will be able to have access to the uh, to, to this at low cost. And you can see that the validity is ninety days, meaning that if a school, for example, buys nine twenty gig as um, one eighty four thousand is valid for ninety days, you have within ninety days that's three months. Um, that's um, like a term for the school to be able to make use of this. So invariably, the data education is just um, a large, uh, large uh, the ability to give the school the option to be able to have access to data bundles on large scale basis. And those data bundles can now be shared to the teachers and students such that they'll be able to enjoy um, access to data at low cost. And also, um, very important to also know that we have um, the largest coverage in terms of our coverage in Nigeria is, is wide. We are expanding, we are growing on daily basis. And that is the reason why this is always also positioned to say that wherever you are, wherever you go, MTN is there. And because MTN is there, MTN data is also available. And because MTN data is available, we are saying that price should not be um, the hindrance to you being able to enjoy or to be able to assess virtual learning, to be able to deliver virtual learning to your students and also to be able to make your teachers and your faculty members to be able to also be on that um, effectively deliver virtual learning. And also by the other end, and this will be there as the engine to be able to move the vehicle of Google Suits. And then the school will be able to get to the destination of virtual learning. Thank you very much. All right, Joe, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm going to be calling upon, um, and we've heard from you. Um, Joseph, you want to add anything else? Joseph Iho. Joseph? No, no not too okay. much, but what we come to the Q and A, I'd like to answer some questions. Okay, okay, that, that's great. All right, so everyone, um, our, the polls will be launching now. Okay, you would see it pop up on your screen. It's about um, seven questions. They are pretty easy, don't worry. There's, this one has pass mark for everybody. Nobody's feeling anything. So, <laughs> all right, so we've just launched the polls. Okay. Um, if you can see the polls, please indicate in the chat box because they've been deployed. Okay. Thank you, Nyobong. Thank you, Dimeji. Okay, so go on and um, answer, because from here on, we're moving straight to the Q&A. There are a lot of very interesting questions, I see. Hello. Hello, kids. Yes, Joseph. Please, we have two demos. Amen. You have what? You two have demos. What? Demonstrations. Two Ooh. demonstrations. Okay. Remain. Okay. No worries. No worries. Okay. Great. Okay, I hope we're done with our polls. All right, Joseph, the demos you spoke about, um, can you please share your screen? Oh, uh, it's Bola, but it will be presented that. All right, buddy, please share your screen. Okay. 
because the polls will be going down any time from now. Can you see okay, my screen? Okay, I see. It says it's coming up. Okay. What about now? It still says it's coming up. All right, so polling time is over. All right, buddy, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you, I'm Olabo Didaudu, also a teacher from Potakot. I just want to show you how GSH has been very useful in my school. Using gamification, you make students want to learn, which is very easy to integrate into Google Classroom, which makes this environment, environment a suitable one for your school. Now, I'll be showing you two different apps you have online or, or software that can easily be integrated into Google Classroom. Or oh, let me show you first one. I'll be demonstrating the Kahoot for you, which makes learning fun for your student. And I'll also be showing you the second one, quizzes. Where the Kahoot, you can go directly, you can share your material, just maybe in form of multi-choice question directly to your classroom once you get a question from like from the top left hand corner you can see here i have my own page hello buddy okay you are Go actually ahead. you're actually frozen what about now okay it's still the same well okay i'm back Can you see no, the not really. No, not really. I'm sharing okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I think that will help. Okay. What about now? It says it's coming. Okay. I'm not on the page. I believe you can see my Kahoot screen. Not at all. Okay, all about this now? Is this it frozen? No, I think Andy should um, help out here. Andy? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I, okay, can, I can hear, hear you. you. All right, should I do my own demo while he settles his own side of the... Okay, yes, please, ahead. yes, please. Okay, so Bode will come back. Okay, let me show you my, net, my model. All right, can you see the screen? Not yet, Andy. It says it's coming up. Okay. Just let me know when it's yes. up. Is yes, it up? it's up now. Yes. Okay. All right, everyone, I'm going to give you a demo of how to use Google Doc for create, to encourage students to write in creative writing or any form of writing in that matter. So please do let me know if you can't hear me very clearly so I can speak a little bit louder if I can. Okay, now to access this tool, you need to open a Google document with a, a Chrome browser. It doesn't work in any other browser except in Chrome browser. Okay, once you have your Google Doc open like this, you go to the tools menu, open tools menu, and then you, you follow the drop down. you'll see the voice typing uh, that has a microphone icon. So I'm gonna click on the voice typing now. There we go. So you see the microphone window open here, this very one, okay? Now, before you start to type or speak, you have to be ready. Don't activate it until you're ready to talk. Now, this tool makes it possible for you to just talk to your system 
and then the system will do the typing for you. So you don't need to write. As for students who don't like to write or type on the keyboard, all they need to do is activate this tool and speak to the system and the system will do the typing for you. Now you have language options here. Here you have different language options that you can use. Here we have Africans. We even have Nigerian English. We have English for Kenya. That is the English spoken with Kenyan uh, accent. So don't worry about your accent. If you feel, oh, will the system pick my accent? There is one prepared for Nigeria. Here you have Nigeria English, the kind of English that is spoken with uh, the Nigerian accent. Okay. So quickly, you can move this uh, to any part of your space if you want. Now I'm going to activate and give you a demo. Here we go. I'll click on it to activate it. Once upon a time, there was a king who had 50 wives, but no child. Full stop. New line. Okay, so you can see how this works. That's a very short demo for you. So when you're done talking, you can click on the microphone icon again, and then it's deactivated. Uh, you can give it a voice commands like new line. It will start a new line for you. If you tell it to delete, it can delete for you. If there's any error in what you have done, you can go back, make corrections, move your cursor back to the end where you stop, and then continue your voice typing. So this is a very wonderful tool that I use to stimulate my students' interest in writing. Thank you very much. Back to you, Kate. Okay. All right. Um, thanks for that, Andy. Okay, so um, we'll move on to Q&A. Um, we're really strapped for time at this uh, point. So, um, Andy, I'll need you to stop sharing your screen, please. Um, okay, so... Ebuka, I'm going to come to you, right? <laughs> okay, so someone actually directed this question um, at you, Ebuka. It says, Mr. Ebuka's Google Education Intervention. Ebuka, it's really your intervention. <laughs> Mr. Ebuka's Google <laughs> Education Intervention in Kenya portrays an affluent focused project. How can such be extended to a public primary and secondary school which actually, which actually need this intervention. So, Ebuka, the floor is yours. Thank you, Kate, and, and thank you to uh, whoever asked that question. I don't know the specific name. Uh, but just to say, uh, Google's education tools are free and available and accessible to everyone and anyone that wants to use it. So the tools are completely free, but the only challenge would be that to actually take advantage of it, you need a device. So you need either a mobile phone or a laptop computer. So there's, we've ex invested in extensive um, programs with partners to you know, ensure that people have access to the support to set up G Suite, um, you know, even a percentage of um, you know, the, 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 that, that support service. However, from a device perspective and from like actual providing devices, uh, I, I think that that scale of transformation is something that the government will have to invest, invest in. Because you know, that, um, just to be very candid, there's a uh, private sector players can bridge certain gaps where we can't construct the entire funnel, essentially. We need the support of the government. So just to, um, and, and to, to, just to shed more light on that, we're actually having conversations with the governments in a lot of African countries and you know, trying to demonstrate the business case and you know, why the need to invest and transform education. But um, just to, 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 to touch on that, in public schools, largely that level of transformation, it, it, it even also needs government approval. So it's not like Google can't just you know, go in and just start and, and provide laptops to everybody or provide, like the government has to kind of buy in to the idea. So just to clarify, although um, I, I will say that there's also uh, some more stories that we have actually showcasing public schools that have done amazing things with GC for Education regardless, like that, that and, and we've seen schools be very creative around how maybe using mobile first. I know that it requires devices. Not everybody has a laptop, but a lot of schools have um, taken great advantage of G Suite via mobile. So I don't know if this answers uh, the question, but I hope it does, uh, but I'll pause here. All right, yes, it does. Um, we know that um, we would need the government before Google is able to do something at least on this scale. That much came through. 
Okay, so um, I have another question. It says, I am a school owner in a town, not a capital city, in the middle belt. What provisions does A, MTN have to improve data access in areas like ours? We currently only have 3G at best. B, Google. Um, okay, what provision does Google have for affordable schools? How can schools like mine find an economical and sustainable way of implementing the G Suite product? Okay, so the first question is directed at Joseph Oweye. So Joe, this person is asking, what provision does MTN have to improve data access in areas like ours? We currently only have 3G at best. So Joe, Okay, thank, thank you very much, um, Kate. Um, and also to acknowledge the question by the um, respondent. So just to mention that yeah, um, in terms of 3G, um, element of 3G also, um, um, also enables data connection. Connectivity also rides on 3G. However, we are um, doing so much in terms of coverage expanding um to make sure that we have more 4g also lighted up cities beyond the capital cities also have 4g's that are lighted up um if maybe taking it further if it's possible that um the person that asked the question can share with us the city and the states so that maybe we can do a deep dive and maybe a contact and we'll be able to um get in touch i mean engage the person more as regards our 3g coverage in that area and also uh, what we are also planning to do in terms of expansion and also 4G coverage. Thank you. Okay. All I, right, I, thank I, you. Thank you, Joe. Ebuka, you want me to repeat the question? Oh, no, or I remember. You... I said, what can a school in that location do to take advantage of G Suite in a sustainable way? Um, so, yeah. like I was sharing earlier, we've invested in a host of programs and training to ensure that schools are actually able to kickstart their G Suite learning journey by themselves at zero cost. So if, if I'll ping the link in the chat again now, because I had pinged it earlier, we've built a library of training content. And these are live videos that actually show how schools can, one, easily set themselves up with G Suite for Education, two, make the best of the tools, three, drive effective learning. So all of these things live online and you can just watch those videos and learn for yourself how to start the journey. That's one. The second bit is that another way that you can be scrappy around using G Suite is the fact that perhaps you can't afford a computer. You can actually use it effectively on your mobile device. Your, if you have an Android device um, and with Chrome, you can have Google Docs, Google Forms, Sheets, Google Classroom, everything, all from your, from your mobile phone. And as we know, like Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa, these are largely mobile first countries. We've seen a, a, there's a strong percentage of G Suite users who use G Suite effectively on their mobile phones. And, um, you know, we, we do have a, a couple of mobile features actually coming in the pipeline in 2021. I can't share a lot now, but there's a lot that will make it much easier to use these devices on mobile phones. So I don't know if that um, sufficiently answers the question about how to be scrappy. I'll just say take the best advantage of the Internet as you can. There's a host of training, including the link I pinged earlier. And then if you don't have a computer, don't feel like, oh, I can't use virtual learning tools because you can use your mobile device and you can also be creative around uh, how you leverage other tools that are not computers, essentially. And there's uh, there's super affordable Android devices out there. I work on Android marketing at Google, and in 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 Nigeria, there's devices that retail for as low as you know between ten and fifteen thousand naira, even under that. In certain other markets, we've launched devices that are as low as thirty dollars. So there's very affordable devices out there uh, to start your journey. So I'll just um, stop and uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that, Ipuka. Okay, so um, I think this question is directed at Andrew. Um, this person is asking, how do you mean when you say jam board? Okay, uh, can you hear me, Kate? Yes, I can. Okay, jam board is not uh, the uh, exam board in Nigeria. It's not that jam. It's actually a Google tool. Uh, it's a live board, just like you have your whiteboard in classroom. Uh, on Jamboard, you can do all kinds of illustrations. Uh, you can collaborate with your students. It's, a, it's a, an online tool available on the G Suite for Education. So it's the best way to describe it to you now, since we don't have a demo, 
is uh, uh, like a normal whiteboard or marker board or blackboard, but it's available online. You can, students can write there, all your students can write there. You can demonstrate, put images there and annotate the images live for all your students to see. So basically it's an online blackboard or marker board or whiteboard. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Andy. All right, so this is um, this question is meant for Joseph Oweye. Yeah? So someone is asking, is data okay? Data pricing may not be suitable for growing schools. How can this be synchronized, Joseph Oweye? Yeah? Hello, Joe. Hello, please. Can you repeat the question? I know that the question. Okay, this person said he first made a comment before he asked the question. He said, "Data data pricing may not be suitable for growing schools. How can this be synchronized?" Okay, um, for us, there are two things about data. Um, network in terms of quality of network and also pricing. Um, and we are seeing to see that compared to what is within the industry in terms of standard, the prices, the prices that we are giving out are prices that are quite low and quite competitive. We have looked at the markets and we see that these are things, uh, prices that could be affordable in terms of um, the um, packages that we have, the volume of data that we have. However, we can have further conversation in terms of the school to see what can be done better, what you can give more, uh, do more as regards uh, the data request of, of, the, of the school. Okay, so um, whoever asked this question, um, send an email, right, to let's talk, L E T S T A L K. Let's talk dot ng at mcn.com. Okay, signify that you attended this session and this is your challenge. And then ask your question. Someone will be on hand to attend to you. Okay. Okay, so um, the next question says, um, my name is Julius. I'm a teacher and an author. I have written some books in chemistry to prepare students to write the examinations. How can I partner with MTN and Google for many students to have access to these books? All right, um, it's a two-way thing. However, Ebuka, hello Ebuka, I'm going to defer to you on this. Uh, interesting, well, uh, Kate, thanks for putting me on the spot. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> In terms of curriculum, uh, we're not really do we haven't we haven't done much in terms of like actually investing in curriculum because the challenge would be that for us to work on curriculum we again we need there's curriculum set by the government and ministries of education etc we still need kind of that level of inter, uh, approval from the government and it's kind of it's a it, it will be an extensive procedure so uh, my answer is that at this time we haven't um, started work um, you, you know investing in transforming curriculum but I'll say don't um, I wouldn't write it off in terms of like the possibilities. Uh, but let me actually, I'll ping another link to the chat in terms of how people can actually sign up to be um, G Suite partners. And uh, if you do, I guess there's there's possibility to say, uh, look for other ways that you can add value and in, into the education space like this one. So let me, let me actually ping that link. Okay, so while Ebuka does that, uh, let's just maximize time. I'm moving on to the next question. This person says, can the students use any laptop or must the institution purchase Chromebooks? Um, Andy, um, I think I'll come to you. All right, thank you, Kate. Um, any la any la laptop will do. As we said, uh, it's an online storage thing. Uh, you don't need any special laptop. Uh, the only difference is that uh, Chromebook uh, is not exposed, it's not susceptible or vulnerable to um, uh, what would anti uh, viruses because uh, it's hosted online, so it's not cannot be attacked by a virus. Just basically different. So 
any any device will do for you. Laptop will do, desktop will do, and it has the internet connection. All right, thank you. Um, Joseph Oweye, yeah. uh, this question is to you. It says, can the data be accessed through Wi-Fi or router? Okay, thank you. Um, yes, the data can be accessed through um, router. So you can, have a, you can buy a router and you have that data on it. But Wi-Fi, no. You know what Wi-Fi um, only makes available the data that is embedded in it. So you can only have the data in that router. Then that router now serves as hotspots and that can then now be distributed. That can distribute internet to other devices. But yes, in terms of the data on a router, yes, it can be on a router. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so I think, um, let me see. One more question. Let me just squeeze in one more question. We're really maxed out on time, guys. Okay, so <clears throat> this person says, um, Okay, this question isn't um, relevant for this session, so I'm just going to skip, skip it. Okay, um, what is the minimum and maximum number of students, teachers, ETC, that can use the application G Suite for Education in a school? So... Um, I, 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 can, I can take that one. So okay, um, the free G Suite for Education suit, once fully set up and upgraded, can host 10,000 um, up to 10,000 people, both students and teachers. So the, it's for, for each school account, there's, you can create up to 10,000 student and teacher, and teacher accounts. Oh, okay. So which means 10,000 is the maximum? Precisely. Which to say 10,000 is the maximum. Okay. So um, one more question and then we're done. Um, this person is asking, um, what about some of us that are not in the education sector? <laughs> Okay, so I guess I'll, the answer to that question is very simple. Um, there is Google Workspace. Basically, all of these amazing tools, Docs, Sheets, Calendar, Meet, etc., but just not for education. So you can, it's, it's fully online. You can take advantage of it. The products are also free and available. So just um, look up Google Workspace after this call. Okay. Okay, so, so maybe just to add, um, Kate, thank you very yeah. much. Also just to add to what um, Ebuka said, that also for MTN, we are also available to non-education sector. Um, you can also reach out to us through the same email address, let's talk um, dot, um, ng at mtn.com, and then we will also provide um, the data services to you, even as non-education institution. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joseph. All right, guys. Um, we've come to the end of this session. Um, we're quite pleased... Uh, um, we had a total of um, just about over 200 people on this call. Um, thank you all for making the time out to be part of this session. As I already said um, earlier, um, we'll be sending an email detailing, you know, and in case you missed it, uh, um, uh, write up to every participant that attended this session. So um, please be on hand. You will get those emails um, today or tomorrow. However, um, you'll also be getting an email that would um, <clears throat> give you different calls to actions. You know, all the questions you want to ask, all the um, inquiries you might have regarding um, G Suite for Education, regarding MTN's data offering for G Suite for Education. You would see all the calls to actions. There are all the contacts you can reach, you know, to, to have your questions answered. Um, we would have loved to take on more. However, we've really um, um, gone past the time slated for this. So thank you all for being on this session. I'm going to give every single panelist here. Everyone, please, um, let's see you. Bode, hello. Let's see you and let's hear you as we take a bow. Thank you all. So, Ebuka. Okay, um, I just want to say thank you everybody for uh, joining the session. It was really great speaking to you all. And I'm excited to, to see what we do. So I'll say go on, use GC for education, transform your learning. MTN you know, has amazing data packages to make this more accessible because as uh, Joseph rightly said, it's, 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 it, it, it is the engine. The, the, the internet platform is one thing, 
the data is the engine that needs to keep it moving. So I just say take make the most of this and just transform learning in your schools. Thank you for having me. Okay, thank you, Ebuka. Andrew, Andrew, I'll come to you. I right, thank you, Kate. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nigeria. My prayers that uh, we're able to do all we can as educators to help our students to learn in every way possible. The way the world is changing and we need to prepare our students for that world. So we have no choice than to do all we can. So, so thank you, Hampton, for making all of this possible. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So Labor Day. For this is a wonderful opportunity. MTN and Google. Google is really transforming education. And with the partner with you with MTN, I believe we have uh, mm -hmm. as a teacher, Sky is just the beginning of the level. Thank you, buddy. So Joseph, Joseph Iho. Thank you very much, kids. And thank you everyone who participated and attended. I must tell you that G-Suit is the best thing that has ever happened to education. Um, sorry, I could not demonstrate what my students do here to you, but I tell you, they work even far, far better than I I expected them to do. They are self learners. So when they come up with research and they give you the results that you don't even imagine. This is, is very good for education. So I will encourage all to be still very cheap. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. So, Joseph, away. Yeah? yeah, thank you very much, Case. And I want to say thank you to everyone. Uh, what more can I say? We have provided, uh, we have made available the vehicle. When I've also told you that the engine that can make the vehicle move. So the only thing that is just left is for you to put, um, put the engine in the vehicle and for you to move towards um, that final destination. And that final destination is virtual learning. It is a norm that comes to stay, it's a reality. And then um, it's just for us to just tap into what we have made available to us, for us to be able to move to that level. And we are available any point in time as your trusted ally to take you to that destination. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone, for making time out for this call. Uh, we look forward to even more collaborations in the future. To all of our attendees, we say thank you. Thank you very much for taking time uh, to make this worth it, because if you weren't here, we wouldn't be here. Thank you very much. So do expect those emails from us, and um, we will keep in touch. For those um, making inquiries about the REF program, don't worry, we are coming. <laughs> you will get your emails. Thank you all once again. Do enjoy your evening. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye, everyone.